Ferriola chimera, better known as the green poison, was the highly lethal virus that swept across the United States after it got released on Black Friday in 2015. Due to it being an engineered virus, a vaccine was out of the question, as its high lethality and contagiousness meant a high mortality rate. Its nature was unknown, meaning a vaccine was far from being designed. Many survived and in time a vaccine was created. A broad spectrum antiviral. It's 2015, the green poison pandemic hadn't been released and the world was running its normal course. Working at the Sequent Biotech Group or SBGX is William Gibson Keller, better known as Bill Kelleher. Husband to April Keller, Keller was part of a team experimenting with a new vaccine design. This design would be able to handle large numbers of mutated versions of a particular virus. This class of design goes by the designation BSAV, or Broad Spectrum Antiviral. When the pandemic struck, SBGX had a significantly advanced BSAV research, possibly having a prototypical design that could combat Amherst green poison. Tragically, before the research could be completed, Kelleher got liquidated. At this point, it was still unsure what virus they were dealing with. However, one person could change the tide of battle against the green poison. Jessica Kendall, a biomedical engineer, started researching the virus after she was rescued from a hostage situation in Madison Square Garden. Well, look who it is. Thanks for getting me out of the garden. I've been in some hostile work environments before, but Jesus. Of course, it's not like this place is going to win any prizes either. Antique equipment, zero staff, patients lining up out the door. This isn't going to cut it. We're doing the best we can, Dr. Candle. Any suggestions you might have, I'm happy to listen. I know, I know. Beggars, choosers, all that crap. What matters is beating this thing, but I can't do that without knowing more about it. And here's a good place to start. Sarah is pretty sure Dr. Gordon Amherst had something to do with the outbreak. God. That asshole. Saw him present a paper at Columbia once, he nearly started a riot. He's part of this? I need to talk to him. Anything of his you can find. Notebooks, laptops, close personal friends, I need that too. And we need to talk about live samples and antibodies. You're gonna be busy. And you'll be? Fixing this. Saving lives. Now if you'll excuse me, I'll get started. Together with the Joint Task Force, or JTF, and the division, she started researching the virus, its origins, and a possible vaccine. Before attempting the research, she needed samples of the original virus strain. One place where this could be found was the place from where it all spread, Abel's department store. Sending in division agents, their task was to collect these samples from the money at the checkout counters. After successfully retrieving the samples, Kendall began her work. However, she still required live samples, only to be found in contaminated individuals. Hey there, I... Give me a second. Yes? I'm sorry, Dr. Kendall, but the sample's not producing results. Did, it? Did you run them at room temperature? Uh, you said... I said room goddamn temperature. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're within temperature variances. You know what? I'll do it myself. Just put it down and we'll both pretend this never happened. Hard to believe you can't find good help in the middle of a pandemic, right? Anyway, the good news is we are up and running on what you've brought in so far. Dr. Ellis taking over the hospital wing was a lifesaver. Now I can focus on research. My wife always says I'm better with pathogens than with people. My ex-wife, funny. Anyways. You just keep doing what you're doing. We are halfway to a blueprint for a vaccine, and with your help, we will get the rest. The Hudson refugee camp was home to many infected refugees that have sought shelter. While being under attack by the cleaners, the division was tasked to secure the refugees and retrieve critical blood samples. 
At this time, through found field intel, Gordon Amherst was suspected to be behind the creation of the Green Poison. His apartment, located in a residential building in Hell's Kitchen, might prove useful. The division was sent to investigate the site and recover any evidence found, including Amherst's notes. After successfully extracting Amherst's notes, Kendall could continue her research. Not long after, a distress call came from the Russian embassy. It was Vitaly Chernenko, a virologist that worked with the smallpox strain in Moscow, a colleague of Amherst. Vitaly knows a lot about the virus and in the time he was stuck in Manhattan, he started researching the green poison. Shortly after the broadcast, the division were sent to extract Chernenko so he could be questioned. However, before the agents could get to him, he was kidnapped by Hornet, one of Aaron Keener's rogue agents. Although this could be considered a bad thing, Kendall managed to download Chernenko's research to continue her research. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but I think we've got something. Thanks to you, we have mapped the genetic drift on green poison. Plus, I have ID'd all the aftermarket DNA Amherst bolted onto it. And thanks to those samples you picked up from the survivors, I was able to harvest antibodies against our friendly neighborhood superbug, and that let me lay out a roadmap for a vaccine. Here, take a look. Normally, I'd take point on the team developing that, but they're a little better equipped to handle it in an arbor. And me? Well, I'm stuck here with you. Which is fine. God knows there's plenty left for me to do here. And with Chernenko and maybe Ammer still out there, all it would take is one psycho asking the right questions. Tell me we're not going to see that. Please. Dr. Campbell, Campbell, you're needed in the recovery ward. Dr. Dr. Campbell. Campbell. Still lots for me to do. Hey. You know we can't survive this again. So please. After all this, Kendall managed to prototype a vaccine for the existing strain of variola chimera. However, as the lab in James Farley post office in New York didn't have the proper tools to produce the vaccine, she sent the design to her surviving lab in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The scientists there used Kendall's prototype in combination with Kelleher's research to create a broad-spectrum antiviral, a vaccine that is able to combat mutant strains of the green poison and every other known virus. It was successful. A batch of 24 samples was created. These samples were sent out to the scientific advisor of President Ellis. This was specifically asked so that they could be securely handled and brought to DC. Ellis aboard Air Force One flew to DC with a briefcase containing information on the location of the samples. However, the Black Tusk, a secretive military contractor, assaulted the lab in Ann Arbor in the meantime as they believed the samples to be there. The Black Tusk, hired by a shadowy organization looking to create a new dynasty, were looking to use the BSAV as it would give them leverage. With no medical infrastructure, another virus would be a huge threat, and they would have the miracle cure. As Air Force One entered DC's airspace, its engine got shot by a SAM turret, and the plane crashed right in front of Capitol Hill. The True Sons, whose stronghold was in the Capitol building, were the first on site, and searched through the wreckage and found the briefcase. They retrieved it back to the Capitol building to use later in their plans. For a while it was in their hands, but soon the division launched an assault on the Capitol building. As the agents entered the rotunda, the briefcase was sitting in the middle. The agents collected it, fought their way through the building and extracted it by helicopter. Alani Kelso, alongside a JTF pilot, brought the briefcase back to the White House where it was returned to Alice. As the reigning factions were defeated, it was time for celebration. Afterwards, however, it appeared Ellis was gone, and he took the briefcase with him. An echo revealed that in a bunker below the White House, Ellis met with the Black Tusk. When Ellis disappeared, they invaded the capital in order to take control of the city, and since they couldn't find it in an arbor, they were looking to collect it in DC. Ellis led them to the location and provided them with the vaccine. They already sent out samples to the top press and were extracting the other samples to their stronghold in Tidal Basin. The division immediately launched an assault on Tidal Basin. After infiltrating the base and fighting through waves of Black Tusk operatives, the agents managed to retrieve the BSAV. However, it's unknown what happened to the rest of the samples. It's definitely interesting to see the creation of the BSAV and how it ended up in DC. The question remains where the other samples will end up and what the Black Tusk are planning to do with them. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the Intel brief, I would like to ask you to like or dislike, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell to become part of the Masterminds HD community and notification squad. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter for daily updates and join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that rolls around Tom Clancy Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. Visit my Patreon page if you're interested in the Intel briefings on characters, factions and events with the summarized information from my videos. To end the video, I have a question for you. What do you think the Black Tusk are planning on doing with the BSAV samples? Leave your answer in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. I'll talk to you in the next video on Discord or on Twitter. Peace out.